When standing here and looking back on history, you will see an intricate world. Continents influence each other in many ways. The discovery of America affects the price of Chinese products. And what happens in the grassland of Central Asia even has influence on North Africa. Following the footsteps of businessmen, pilgrims and herdmen, these great influences spread to every corner of the world through a network that existed 2000 years ago. And this network is the famous ancient Silk Road. Hi, I am Yvonne from the Netherlands. I love traveling and living in China. In this documentary, I'm going to take you along the Silk Road. We will travel from Xi'an all the way to Urumqi in the far west. On our journey, we will explore the past and the present. In ancient times, Xi'an was once called Chang'an, and it's always been considered the starting point of the Silk Road. Close your eyes and imagine how prosperous this city once was in 2000 years ago. The foreign merchants on the streets came from all over Asia, including Japan and Korea. In the West Market of Chang'an, the merchants had shops, and in those shops they sold goods, like jewelry and spices. Even today, you can still see the traces that were left from trade in Xi'an. Hello. Hello. Uh, this man, how Nan, or Hubing, originated in the Han and Tang dynasties. It's kind of a Central Asian food that was introduced by the Songdians, who were very popular on the Silk Road during those days. The commercial exchanges between the East and the West didn't only bring goods to the area, but also sharing of food and culture. All of these exchanges have helped shape the various characters and styles in China's wonderful history. The corridor connecting the Pacific, Central Asia, the Persian Gulf and India witnessed great knowledge and religious exchanges. In the neighboring town, along the ancient Silk Road, Dunghua offers the fruit of religious and art exchange on the road. Dunhuang is an ancient and prosperous hub connecting China with the West. Regardless of a long and perilous journey, numerous camel caravans driven by merchants pass through this busy hub. However, with two important maritime explorations conducted by Columbus and Vasco da Gama in the late 1400s, the patterns of global communication and trade changed. The center of the world shifted from the Silk Road to Western Europe. The once glorious Silk Road disappeared. I'm on my way to Xinjiang, which is located in the northwest of China. Surrounded by immense mountains, it is a landlocked province far from the sea. It boasts marvelous landscapes and abundant species deeply influenced by the culture along the Silk Road and grassland culture, Xinjiang is home to 47 ethnic groups and has a population of 23 million. Puma and his family are Kazakh. He just caught one of his sheep, which he will be selling to a customer. I met Huma last night and he invited me to come over to his house. So this is a cha? So there is a cha in there, and what is there? Yen. Yen? Oh, this is a yen? It's not a yen. 
，这是牛奶，这里面是砖茶，嗯哼，和还有盐、咸盐。I really enjoyed spending a day with the Huma family. I learned a lot about their culture, their traditions, and their customs. Unfortunately, it's time for me to move on to Urumqi. But the Humas, their life will go on on the grasslands. As the glory of the Silk Road has gone away with history, Xinjiang has become an inclusive and modern city with ethnic characteristics. In 2013. President Xi introduced the Belt and Road Initiative, which evokes memory of its familiar history. Following the footsteps of the travelers and saints who moved around with commodities and faith, we promote trade, invest in sea and land channels, and cooperate and communicate with other countries. Perhaps the pivot of the world is drifting back to China and the Silk Road, that has played a key role for more than a thousand years.